Mike Tedeschi, Wealth Management Advisor, Perspective Wealth Planning, with this week's market breakdown video. We're going to take a look at the four major U.S. indexes. We'll also look at the U.S. dollar and some commodities. And today we're also going to pay attention to some sentiment data. We're at a very interesting point right now and uh, what that might mean for us moving forward. So let's jump right into it. The S&P 500 is still holding on to the major key important level out in that 4250 zone. I am filming this Thursday before the market is opened. Overnight, we have seen a move up in the S&P 500 right around that 4400 zone. When we're paying attention here on a short-term basis, we really need to get back up above that 4450 so we can continue on towards those all-time highs. And if we fall below that 4250 zone, that would completely change the structure of the market. So as it sits right now, all we've done is had a breakout, a back test. We've held that area of support. We started to make the bounce, but we have still put in over the last month or so a series of lower highs. So we are really paying very close attention to what's going on here. But if we look at this and we have a series of, of lower highs, we also have potentially a series of higher lows here over the last um, couple of weeks, which means we have a nice trading range here and whichever way this breaks would be very good. So again, we're really paying attention to that 44.50 on the S&P 500, but really not a whole lot negative that we can say. We have a little bit of weakness, but it pulls right into a major level of support and none of the major indexes have broken below it. NASDAQ, same exact comments apply. When we jump in here and we take a look in at the Dow, Right? We know that this is more of a trading range like the Russell is for the uh, really since February, March of this year. Right? This move right here, gyrating in between that 35,000 level right here and that 33,500 level. Right? The break from this would be uh, a very good indicator of where that next move is going to be. But really, we have a lot of resistance up here on the top end of this chart. So even if we get back up over 35,000, we still have a battleground until we make it to new all-time highs. So really with the, both the Dow and the Russell inside this zone, not that interested in it. I'm waiting for that move above or below those major levels. And on the Russell, we're talking above that 2360 level or below 2100. And you can see we're basically right there in the middle of this range where you have about an equidistance to the uh, top end of the range and equidistance to the bottom end of the range. So this is really just a messy sideways market has been really the majority of this year. This is a very nice long base, right? We came from below. And when you get a consolidation or a base, you have a higher propensity to break the direction uh, opposite of where you came from. So we came from down below, so we should continue to head higher. That would be the higher probability outcome, but there's no guarantee um, that obviously that that happens. So we are still just watching both of these levels very, very closely. And as I continue to say, I think what happens in the Russell is going to be very, very important the overall context of the market. Now, when we take a look at the U.S. dollar, I remove some of the older lines that were on this chart. So we have nice, fresh, clean, really clear 94.50 to 95 is that major resistance zone that's been in play since 2018. You can see the importance here. That was acted as support. It acted as support. When we broke below it, it then acted as resistance, right? And here we are again, acting as resistance. So, you know, the U.S. dollar hasn't really gone anywhere since last July. This is where we were last July. We're basically right at that same point. We had a move to the downside, but when we back this chart up, as you guys know, we could not break that really, really important multi-decade area of like 89, 90 in that zone, right? So the U.S. dollar really just has been trapped over the last year. Where this goes next is really important. If we break to the upside, that's going to be a headwind on commodities. If we continue to fall from right here, which would be a very logical place for us to see a failure, um, that could be that tailwind to really continue to push commodities higher. When we start talking about commodities here, all right, we have talked extensively about the key level of 75 and oil from the beginning of the year that 75 to 77 level we finally got above it we're now into the 80s when we back this chart up and we look at it on a monthly basis there is not much resistance whatsoever all the way up to the low 90s to that 100 zone all right so continue follow through here to the upside would make a ton of sense and it's certainly worth paying attention to. When we look at gasoline, gasoline is right at that 
240 level that we talked about as being very important because we go back on this chart and we look at what happened in 2011, 12, 14. This area acted as support, and then once it broke, this area has acted as resistance ever since then. We are in the process of potentially breaking out. If we do, it looks like gas probably goes back up towards that $3 zone. All right. Now well, let's take a look in at copper. Copper making a huge move over the last few sessions, right? That's the monthly view, but we have been really trapped right around that 420 level here for the majority of the year since that push up into March. And we're finally getting that break here to the upside. We're not that far off from the highs that were put in back in May. Watching for copper to continue to follow through. And you can see where this breakout is potentially occurring at, right? This was this major resistance level that we had back in 2010 to 2012 where we kind of topped out and then headed down we broke above it and we held the bottom end of this zone right here and now we're starting to head back up so i really would be paying attention to that high in there at that 488 level above that copper could really continue to see that follow through gold had a couple of uh, good had a good session yesterday um, still not above that 1800 psychological number. When we look at this on a daily time frame, we know it's just been down basically for the last year. But we look at this on a monthly time frame. We held an important level. We're still kind of trapped inside this zone. Again, we really need to see the precious metals kind of follow through here to the upside. This certainly could be that bull flag, but it really doesn't matter until we get back up above here. And as we know, if it breaks below this, that changes the structure of the market. So we had just an incredible run up for a couple of years, and it's really just been a digestion here over the last year with a slightly downward bias. We're looking for that to potentially have that follow through. Now, silver's starting to put that break that we had down below 22 behind it, right? And we mentioned this could be a false breakdown here where we were only able to be underneath that important level for one session, and then we immediately bounced back up above it. If I'm looking at this market right now, I do not want to own it underneath of this low, and I really want to see this back up over 25, and that would really start making this chart a bit better. But really, when we back this up and again look at it on a monthly time frame, we are just trading kind of above this major decade-long important key price action level. So we really need a follow-through above 29, and we're a long way from there. So it's just, again, kind of that sideways mess that we've seen here over the last year. Platinum, right kind of at that important level. Look, we, we fell down. We tested uh, right there just under 900 and bounced right back up. I said that if we lost this zone right here, that was kind of the end for this. So it, it made its move right where it had to back up over that psychological level of 1,000. But more importantly, it was had a trouble closing over about 1,025 here for the last three months, starting to do that right now. Be very constructive to see this back up around 1140. That would really help fix this chart. But same comments apply as the rest of the precious metals at the moment. Now, when we look at palladium, palladium had an incredible sell-off in comparison to the rest of the metals. Fell right into the 1,700 to 1,800 key level. Broke below that, it was going back down towards those coronavirus lows um, so this was a must hold area and we can see we had an explosive move from 1800 to 2200 a little bit of a pullback and now trying to break that 2200 again above 2200 next level up to what we're looking at is 2500 but this is starting to feel like this could have been a potential bottom that was put in here right at an important key level and one of the things I always like to take a look at is sentiment data. And the reason why I value sentiment data, when too many people get on one side of the boat, whether it's bearish or bullish, that typically can lead to that boat kind of flipping over and us turning around and heading in the other direction. When we look at the optimism that we have at the moment in both bonds and stocks, they're extremely low. We're back to where we were in the midst of the you know pandemic, essentially, and where we were back in that 2019 when we had that sell-off, and right around the beginning of 2000, uh, the end of 2018, beginning of 2019 when we had this sell-off. Right, sentiment looking forward is very bearish. It's seeing lots of concerns in terms of supply chains and inflation and many different things. So the majority of people are really, really concerned about where stocks kind of are headed. We really haven't fallen that high, that hard from all time highs. So, like this type of sentiment reading, usually would be we'd be down 15, 20 percent from the highest type of 
um, you know, sell off not 5% from the highs and now, you know, 3% from the highs. Bonds look the kind of the exact same where we really are, are back towards those really, really low sentiment readings. And when we see sentiment readings like this, we really want to take a look at the data sets and the data sets line up with kind of what you would think and expect. When you have those low sentiment readings across stock and bond markets, we have a number of singles going all the way back to 2000. So we have a decent data set for this one here. One year later, stocks are positive 100% of the time. There was only one down draw six months later, and that was in 2008. All right. And even if we look out three months, right, we only had two pullbacks, and one of them was down 0.2%, so hardly anything at all. When everybody gets on one side of the boat, we have that tendency to go the opposite direction. So everybody's very concerned at this point in time. What would be the most surprising outcome? Stocks to continue to head higher if you're just taking a look at the way sentiment is right now. We keep a look at price action. Price action looks good. We haven't broken any key levels, and sentiment is very sour. This has a setup and a potential where we could see a strong fourth quarter. Of course, as we know, there are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of concerns. Um, with supply chains that actually could spill over and mess up holiday sales. So there is reason to be a little bit concerned. But when we just look at the data and we look at what the charts are telling us right now, things still look pretty solid out there, folks. As always, I hope you guys have yourself a fantastic week. I will see you guys next week. If you have any questions, want to reach out to me, talk anything about the markets, feel free to reach out to mtedeski at perspectiveofplaying.com or shoot me a uh, phone call at 814-580-9881. I will see you guys next week. Take care.